The Royal Mail Ship, or RMS Titanic, easily the most famous steamship in history, was once the symbol of luxury and dreams that promised to come true. It took three years and 3,000 people to construct it. On April 10, 1912, the brand new ocean liner greeted its passengers with the smell of fresh varnish, paint, and newly sawn wood. Back then, they still used lead for the production of paint and linseed oil as a binder, so that smell must have been powerful. When it was fully operational, the giant vessel consumed around 850 tons of coal per day, and the passengers would also smell its fumes. Another odor that must have filled the Titanic's decks, at least the first-class ones, was the new scent by the famous French perfume house Guerlain. It was released earlier in the same year and quickly became a hit with the well-off ladies. The perfume that you can still buy today is a mix of violets and iris with creamy vanilla. On the dramatic evening of April 14th, when Titanic only had hours to live, the unknowing waiters were serving oysters, lamb and mint sauce, roast duck with applesauce, and other delicacies to their first-class guests. The second class was filled with the smells of curried chicken, spring lamb, and roast turkey. Third-class passengers had simple gruel and biscuits that night. At 11 p.m., as the ship got dangerously close to the iceberg, the new smell added to the mix. It was a mineral odor with metallic notes. If you have ice in your fridge, you must have noticed it takes the smell of neighboring foods. The same happens to icebergs. They take on the odors of sea animals and maintain the chemical composition of the water that they're made of. If more people had known about the meaning of this particular metallic smell, they probably still wouldn't have saved the ship. But the number of people that managed to escape to safety could have been larger. Speaking of smells, in case you've ever wondered what space smells like but aren't planning to become an astronaut anytime soon, listen up. You can try out Eau de Space, an aroma that was designed by NASA decades ago. The idea of the perfume was to help astronauts prepare for their encounters with space at all levels during their training. But hold on a second, space is a vacuum, so it technically shouldn't have any smell. Yet, astronauts who have been out there remembered it as a pleasant metallic odor, something like the smell of welding fumes or burnt gunpowder. They could smell it on their spacesuits after coming back into their spacecraft. We can also guess what other planets smell like based on what their atmospheres are made of. Venus has clouds of sulfuric acid in its atmosphere, so it must smell like rotten eggs. Mars and Uranus also smell like rotten eggs, by the way. Each of the layers of Jupiter's atmosphere is made up of different chemicals. That's why it smells different depending on where you are. Some layers would greet you with a yummy aroma of bitter almonds or marzipan, and others, closer to the top, smell like cleaning products. The remaining planets of the solar system are unlikely to have a distinctive scent because they're mostly odorless gases in their atmospheres. As for our natural satellite, the Moon, the Apollo astronauts claim that its dust smells like gunpowder. The fragrance of fresh-cut grass makes regular mowing it nearly worth it. But did you know that the grass isn't having a great time while you're doing it? In fact, it's sort of screaming for help. And because grass can't scream out loud, it expresses discomfort by releasing a mix of smelly, volatile molecules. It does it to protect itself from insects. Caterpillars and other similar creatures just love to munch on sugary plant snacks. When you mow the grass, it releases jasmonic acid, among other things. It's sort of a signal to parasitic wasps that there is a caterpillar available. These creatures deal with the grass's offenders, and it can keep growing happily ever after. From the point of view of the grass, mowing is not much different from an insect attack. So it protects itself the best way it can. The rain has an easy-to-recognize powerful smell, also known as petrichor. But where does it come from? Turns out, some plants secrete oils during drought. The rocks and soil accumulate those oils compounds, and when the raindrops hit, they mix with water and release into the air. Sometimes these oils combine with chemicals produced by bacteria living in the soil. The result of this cooperation is a musky odor you can smell in the woods or in your garden when you turn over the wet soil. 
Ozone also adds to the smell of rain, especially after thunderstorms. It happens when a lightning bolt's electrical charge splits oxygen and nitrogen molecules in the atmosphere, and they later recombine into ozone. One theory says we enjoy the aroma of rain so much because it's imprinted in our brains. Different cultures have always associated rain with something positive, and we could have inherited that perception. Now, chocolate fans, of which I am one, this is for you. There are flowers that smell exactly like your favorite tree. It's a product of a tropical plant, after all. And since it's impossible to recreate the exact magical scent chocolate has in a perfume, you can plant some chocolate flowers, also known as the green eye lyra leaves, in your garden. These flowers look like daisies with yellow petals around a deep red center. When you pick its petals, the flower releases the delicious smell we all love so much. The leaves and branches of the plant also have the same fragrance. Now, in case I got you interested, you can find the flower in dry soils of Arizona, Texas, Colorado, and other states with similar climates. It blooms all year, and the aroma is strongest on warm days. The bear cat, also known as the bitturong, does not only look super cute, but also smells like buttered popcorn. Baturongs prefer to stay alone and use their aroma to mark their territory and find potential partners when they have to. Scientists tried to figure out the secret of their unusual smell and suggested it could come from secretions from the scent glands under the animal's tail. Further research showed that the popcorn smell comes from the bear cat's urine. After the animal answers nature's call, it leaves a scent trail in the trees with its tail that often gets soaked. But if the real popcorn only releases its amazing smell when it's popping under heat, how do bear cats manage to do it without a microwave? <laughs> well, the answer could be in their diet, or more likely, in the bacteria that come in contact with the animal's natural fluid. Durian is a fruit popular in Southeast Asia that smells sweet and nice to some people, but to the majority, it's a mix of rotten onions and sweaty socks. The stench is so powerful that it's banned on public transportation and hotels in some countries. The secret of durian is its 44 odor-active components. The mix is so complex that you can never tell what it's going to smell like. And despite that horrible smell, durian is considered a delicacy and is used to make mostly sweet dishes like cakes and candy. There was a smelly incident involving durian at a library in Australia. The smell of rotting fruit in a cupboard has spread across the entire building through the air conditioning system. They mistook it for gas leakage and had to evacuate around 500 students and teachers. Well, that stinks. And finally, if you've ever been to natural hot springs or went to see some geysers, you'll never forget the smell of hydrogen sulfide, or less poetically, rotten eggs. It's actually not only yucky but also highly flammable. But it can also be quite useful. Most households in Iceland use geothermal springs as a source of hot water. Although it doesn't smell fresh, it's perfectly safe to drink, and the smell doesn't stay on your body after you take a shower. So there. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.